Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1526. You can find an excuse or you can find a way. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm revved up and very excited today to share with you a very special guest who's calling in from across the pond, as we say, from Southwest Hertfordshire, England, Richard Jenkins. Richard Jenkins is a motorsports enthusiast who has a keen interest in what happened to racers after they left the sport. Inspired by a book released in 1966 about the former British soccer players titled Where Are They Now? authored by Pringle and Fissler, Richard decided to trace past race car drivers. In 2014, he was approached by the widow of racer Richie Genther, and in 2020, his book titled Richie Genther, Motor Racing's Free Thinker, was published. With memoirs from the family, friends, and fellow racers, this biography is also packed. After meticulous research with an abundance of quotes from Richie himself to create as thorough and as deeply personal life story about Richie as possible. We'll be back in just a minute to talk with Richard, but first a word from our valued sponsors that make Cars Yeah possible. We'll be right back. Hey, Cars Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Covercraft. I've protected my vehicles with their products for decades. Want to keep your vehicle's interior looking new? It's easy with Covercraft seat covers. They'll protect your seats from the daily abuse of pets, children, weekend adventures, and even those everyday spills. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. All Covercraft seat covers are easy on, easy off design that are machine washable. You can choose from many fabric options, colors and accessories, all designed and carefully sewn for your special vehicles. Their seat gloves are semi-custom fit for cars and trucks, and their seat savers, a favorite of mine, are custom tailored to fit your seats like a glove. Work truck seat covers are tough, durable, denim weight fabric. It's like putting a pair of rugged jeans on your truck's seats. Want to stay warm? Covercraft also offers seat heaters. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark at Cars Yeah sent you. That's Covercraft.com. Are you a Cars Yeah subscriber? If you're not, go to CarsYeah.com, click on the free book button, and I'll send you my free filler up book. It's a very cool book I created of fuel filler fun, some very cool imagery, and great quotes from past guests here on Cars Yeah. Plus, you'll get my weekly email follow-up and my weekly blog. Just go to CarsYeah.com, click on the free book button, and I'll send it to you right away. Thanks for subscribing. Hey, Richard, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Certainly am. Well, it's really great to have you here. You know, I've had a, a kind of a rash of Maybe rash is the wrong word. Yeah, Several. probably the wrong word at the moment, <laughs> isn't it? <bad? laughs> Especially in this environment right now. Let's say a uh, a number of English authors of new books that have just come out, which I'm very excited about this book that you have rich, on Richie Ginther. Before we jump into some questions I have, and we're going to talk about this book, is there maybe one thing you could share with our listeners that most people don't know about Richard Jenkins? Well, I'm not actually a full-time writer. Uh, well, certainly not at the moment. All of this was done in my spare time. I actually work or trying to work as a coffee machine repair uh, logistics scheduler. I get the coffee machines in England and Scotland, Wales to where they need to be. And uh, although this is my passion, uh, that at the moment is my, um, my paid job. So uh, hopefully I can make more of it in the future. Yeah. Wait a minute. I thought you Brits only drank tea. There's some coffee being being enjoyed over there, too. Is, uh, is, is it, that true? <laughs> Bill, it's, it's all coffee now. It's all coffee oh. now. Tea, tea's going out the window. Oh, um, no. I mean, all but, that yeah. history and all that. Well, i tell you something. When you have a excellent cup of tea, you realize why it's such a wonderful drink. Now, a lot of the teas that we get over here, maybe aren't so great and they're not that exciting. But when you have a really excellent cup of tea, uh, I guess it's like coffee as well, but it makes a big difference. So, well, that's fascinating. 
Uh, we're going to have some fun talking about this book, but before we dive into the book, I would love for you to share a quote or a mantra. This is some kind of saying that maybe has been a part of your life or has some meaning for you. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tire spinning a little bit here on Cars. Yeah, so Richard, grab the wheel. I always like the mantra, but you can find an excuse or you can find a way, um, mm. which I suppose is especially relevant at the moment in, in relatively troubled times. Um, but to uh, bring it in specific co- um, relation to the book, there were numerous barriers that was in my way. We had a relatively limited budget, a lot of relevant people to interview in different countries. Obviously, uh, Richie spent the majority of his life in America and California, but he was also in Italy, Japan, Britain. So uh, there were a lot of people to uh, talk to, but um, the other thing was that Richie's son, uh, Brett, he didn't want to help at all. He was happy to give the okay for the book to be written, but it, he, for his own reasons, which I've respected, did not want to be involved actively in the book. That, that was a bit of a shame. Uh, though the family have been as helpful as they can, I think it just missed a little bit with his I think with the early days of Richie and the last days of Richie, that input would have been even better. But uh, uh, we, we've done as much as we can with all the other people. And I didn't let any of these things get in my way. It's about getting on with it, getting your head down, putting your sleeves up and uh, trying to keep going. And uh, if we do keep going, we can over, uh, overcome whatever obstacles uh, we have. Well, absolutely. And of course, that's very appropriate today with what we're dealing with in the world with this virus. It really fits in. But but you said a word that kind of struck something with me, and that was uh, excuses, making excuses. Um, When I was younger, and my dad taught me a lot of really great things, and one of them was, and I don't remember the specific situation, but I said something and he said, well, that sounds like an excuse to not do the work. And Mm. I kind of stopped and I'd forget the, I was probably junior high. You're a little cantankerous when you're in junior high, that age, (laughs) your body's going through all this chemical imbalance and stuff. And I remember my dad said something to me and it's always stuck in my mind about excuses. He said, you know, Mark, excuses are the lies that we tell ourselves. Mm. And it, Mm. it stuck with me to this day. So even to this day, I lost my dad about three years ago. Uh, but whenever I, say to myself, oh, you know, some excuse for not doing something that I know I should do. I, I hear his voice and I kind of stop yeah. and go, okay, comes Dad, back. yeah, yeah I, I'm not going to use that as a reason to not do what I need to do uh, and move sure. forward. But I think that's a great quote. Well, let's dive into this book a little bit. Now, again, the title is Richie Ginther, Motor Racing's Free Thinker. And I don't know a lot about Richie Ginther. And before you put this book together, I knew of him and seen pictures of him and little stories and things, but I didn't, wasn't able to dive in depth into Richie Ginther. Let me start by asking you, what's one of the most incredible things you learned about Richie in writing this book? I think, to be honest, it was how rounded he was as an individual, because, I mean, all the great American drivers that were in Formula One, uh, Dan Gurney, Mario Andretti, Phil Hill, though he wasn't as involved in Formula One, but he was still there, Carol Shelby, uh, even people like Eddie Cheever uh, more recently. Most people know a fair bit about them, um, partly because they were involved in racing or have been involved in racing uh, long after they stopped driving uh, in whatever forms they were doing. Richie chose deliberately not to be involved. And as a result, he's quite, I wouldn't say forgotten because I didn't have to remind anybody who Richie was. I didn't have to go to anybody and say, I might this book about Richie Gimper. He was, no, he raced for Ferrari, but they all knew who he was straight away. But in terms of the person behind the driver, as it were, or the person away from the driver, maybe I should say, not many people knew. And how well-rounded he was. I mean, he was involved in art, recycling. He liked going to uh, Arizona and Utah and California, at the archaeological digs, and spent days and weeks and months there um, from time 
And this was all, you know, about 10 years, only only 10 years after he was racing in Formula One. And you couldn't see other people like, I'm not just going to use the Americans, you, you couldn't see uh, people like Sterling Moss doing that. Certainly not the, the guys of today. And it was just, it struck me just how amazing it can be that somebody can drive at 200 miles per hour uh, on, you know, some of the most dangerous racetracks in the world, yet be totally at home in the middle of the desert, on on the ground, on the floor, um, digging away. It, 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 it was quite remarkable, really. So he had a, a, a really well-faceted life then. Uh, I know that his widow approached you about writing this book. How did you two connect? I mean, did you know each other or did somebody refer her to you? It was through the website. Um, uh, you mentioned in the introduction about uh, where are they now? And uh, the Richie page has been on there uh, since the start, uh, about 2002, it went online. And my page was one of the few, but she, in her words, um, that got Richie's story right. But he didn't. Uh, this this is the story of Richie, um, as far as most people were concerned. Right. Went to Indianapolis in 67, quit, quit in the half, disappeared into the desert. Uh, some thought he was in a camper van, some thought he was in a trailer, uh, smoked, drank, went a bit potty, and then died. You know, he was only 59 when he died. So, uh, tragic life. And... Although I didn't know the whole story when she got in touch, I did at least have the very basic information that this wasn't a tragic life. Uh, He had a bit of interest in other things. And she liked that. And she said, look, I know you're only one person, but please, can you get the word out there? But he wasn't some kind of drug addict or bum. He didn't commit suicide. There There was all sorts of talk of uh, Richie, which was Evanus. And basically, she she just connected with me. Uh, I've done my bit initially. In 2014, 2015, I got in touch with people and said, look, you've got to get rid of this because the people are seeing it, Richie's family are seeing it, it's hurtful, it's wrong, get rid of it. Um, but I didn't really have the time at, uh, at that time to uh, write the book or do anything more. And then... Basically, the one one thing that I have been happy about is that the widow has finally uh, got the book that she really wanted. Um, and I think a number of people wanted, but this is the true story of what happened to Richie. Uh, it, as you said, you brought up multifaceted. He was, that, that was one of her words she used. It's just to right the wrongs but it's been going on for so long uh, with this guy. This this guy was a wonderful guy, and history has kind of treated him wrongly, all because he put his back to Formula One, well, not just Formula One, motorsport as a whole. And it was kind of, motorsport says, ah, right, you're going to turn your back on us. We'll make up stories about you. So uh, that, 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 was, that was always the driving factor with this book. Yeah, when you go and do a, any kind of research just superficially about Richie Ginther, Basically, you just see, oh, yeah, that's right. He raced for Ferrari, Formula One. I mean, he raced at Monaco and, and all these wonderful Grand Prix, raced for BRM and Honda. And and then it just kind of like peters out. And you're like, well, where'd he go? What happened to him? And I believe uh, when you go look on Wikipedia, well, he died of a heart attack while he was with his family in France. And you go, well, okay, that's, you know, that happens. He wasn't very old and so forth. So I think it's fantastic that you brought out the different aspects of who the man was. Definitely a unique guy. And the fact that we're clarifying some of the things, and I'm sure that his family, uh, despite whatever's going on with his son, uh, but with his wife or his widow, um, is excited for what, what you've done here. When did you realize that this was a great opportunity for you to write a book uh, like this about Richie? It, it was kind of, in, as these things often do, it kind of happened by accident, really, because the opportunity was there for me to 
have a bit more time to write. Uh, my kids have been growing up little by little, and they give me just that eek, eeking of a, uh, a bit more free time. And I said to myself, I want to, I want to write. I want to do a bit more because the website is great, but it doesn't really allow me to write in detail about a lot of people. So that, that's why I went back. I thought, I've got all these photos of Richie. It'd be nice to, initially, the idea was to be like a four page article on the website. Uh, we can put like a kind of word page up and, you know, people can click on it and that, that would have been it. And then it kind of evolved from there. The four page article I planned to write was 21 pages. And I thought, hmm, okay, this is good, but it's going to be a bit big for a online article. I'll get in touch with some people I know and see if there's anything there. And things as they often do snowboard, people saw that there was a gap in the market, but there has been no book about Richie. Goodness knows why. Goodness knows why it's a Britain writing about him and why it's about 90 years. Uh, he was born uh, just shy of 90 years ago. Why it's taken so long. But I, as as you know, I often do, if there's a niche, I want to go for it. Uh, thankfully, the publisher agreed with me. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another. Yeah. Is this your first book? Yes. Wow. Hopefully not wow. my last. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, debut book at the moment. Well, congratulations. That's pretty cool. You know, it's another uh, oddity about the last three Brits I've had on the show here who've written books. It was all their first books, and they're all fantastic books. <laughs> one, of course, about Nikki Lauda, uh, another great race car driver. And, uh, you know, this is just fascinating. Um, let me talk about a challenge that you faced in writing this book. You alluded to part of it w with his son not really wanting to be a part of this, but what was one of the biggest challenges you faced writing this first book? I think, well, first of all, uh, the practical one, but the uh, publisher said to me, well, we're going to go ahead in May. And uh, just so you know, uh, your deadline is October. And I thought, right, okay, is that, is that normal? And I went, I went to other people and they said, that's not normal. That's not normal. Um, it I seems think like a of, very what, short period of time. Yeah, what, one of the Brits, that you've had on, I know, has spent like nine or ten years oh, yeah. uh, putting the book together. <laughs> nine years, uh, yes. but, yeah. Yeah, that might um, be a little bit too long. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, but it was a case of, right, I've got six months to do it. I am working full time. I have three children, uh, all under the age of nine. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a ball buster, uh, to be totally frank. But I was. Very fortunate. Um, at, at one stage, I thought, how am I going to do this? I've been helped by somebody, a huge Gimpher fan. Uh, thankfully for me, he lives in Britain as well. Uh, lives down about two hours away. He had every single article ever written about Richie. He's a, mass, he's a massive Phil Hill and Richie Gimpher fan. He said, uh, here you go. Here's, here's every single article. And uh, that was that was the start. Basically, I split it up into bits. I, I had to because I was up against such a limited time. And I did all the articles there. Then I went on and found all the newspapers, historic newspapers. That that was me uh, having a look. And thankfully, technology has increased uh, so much that you can delve into historic newspapers, but I couldn't have done maybe even five years ago. Then it was to go around and meet as many people as I could. Uh, thankfully, he uh, did race in England, uh, Richie, uh, with BRM. So I was able to go and see some people there. For the American guys, again, this world is shrinking in some ways. Uh, so like I'm doing tonight, uh, getting in touch on the phone, getting in touch on Skype, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, all these sort of things that meant I could, I could go. So the, so the biggest challenge was for me then, okay, this is a very short time. What I don't want to happen is for the book to seem rushed. This is the only book that probably almost certainly will come out uh, with Richie. You know, I wanted it to be the definitive one. I don't want to spoil it by making it feel rushed. Well, the feedback I've got is that it hasn't been, which is very pleasing. And it just proves that when you've got a deadline, or when you've got a target to go for, you know, you become so focused and so motivated, but it, 
it, it almost isn't a challenge. It, it's, it's the norm. But uh, that, that was definitely uh, the lack of considerable time to write it uh, yeah. was by far the biggest challenge. Well, you had no time for any excuses going back to your, no, your no, quote no. Exactly. <laughs> at the beginning. Exactly. You just had exactly. to buckle down and do it and get it done. Well, plus the uh, – I would imagine you had a bit of a personal – dedication to Richie Ginther's widow to make this right and do this right. You know, so there's a, it wasn't just you doing it in a way you're answering to her in a way out of respect for her history. Yeah. Answering to her. I mean, if anything else, the book was just for her, but though this son didn't want to get involved, his wife, Richie's daughter-in-law has always been very enthusiastic about it. And she's given me great encouragement as well. She said, I can't send you photos. I can't do this. I can't do that. But go for it. Um, and what she's told me after the event, she, has, she hasn't seen the book. I've offered to keep sending her one. But um, Brett, at the moment, he, Brett is a doctor. So he's obviously very busy uh, at the moment. And it's quite a stressful time for them all, as, as you can imagine. So she, she's concentrating on that. But what she did say, she told me a little tale, the Le Mans film recently with uh, Matt Damon. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, uh-huh. yes. Yeah. There was a brief mention. There's not a lot, but there's a brief mention of Richie in that film. His granddaughter, Claire, uh, went to watch the film and was absolutely thrilled. She was going to watch it anyway. She, she's interested in cars. I'm not sure she's interested because of Richie or for her own means, but certainly she seems to have got the car bug of the family she went to go and see the film and she was overjoyed that Richie was mentioned so it's kind of if the book heads Claire's way or uh, anybody else's way it would be for her as well you know this is what your granddad did be proud of who he was because he you know fabulous racer fabulous person fantastic very very cool we're going to take a short break thank our sponsors and we'll be right back My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for the enthusiast and the collector. It's your monthly must-read whether you dream of owning a collector car, have two cars, or 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Plus, you'll get the exclusive SEM guide to restoration shops included for free. At checkout, use the code CARSYA and receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription. It's an exclusive offer from me here at Cars Yeah. I'm Mark Green, and I love Sports Car Market Magazine. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah. And I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah! podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah! website at com. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting. But what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy-to-read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars yeah, has written that book, and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know, everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. All right, we're back. Now, I normally ask my guests about 
a story that instigated their personal passion for cars. Would you call yourself a car guy, Richard? I'm going to be honest. I'm more people guy. Uh, than a car guy. As you can probably tell with Richie, uh, he has interested me more as a person. But, you know, I do, I do, through what I do, have a interest in cars. And I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie. But my journey, if you like, kind of started with a person and kind of evolved from there. Um, well, evolved around cars. So let me ask you this. Now, Richie drove a lot of different kinds of cars for different marks and so forth. In all your studies of putting this book together and writing it, was there a car, Mark, that kind of intrigued you a little bit and got your interest up? I think, well, it, it has to be the one uh, that's on the front cover, the Shark Nose 156 oh, yeah. Ferrari. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful car. Part of the reason that it is on the front is it's a beautiful car. It, it's a unique car, and I've been lucky to see it up front it was actually Richard's car, but sort of the Goodwood Festival of Speed, I think it was about three years ago, three or four years ago, Phil Hill's son, Derek, was driving it. The other reason uh, that it's on the front is because Richie, and this, this is again what people don't realise, is how involved he was in uh, developing it. Because Ferrari in 1960, they weren't sure whether mid-engined front engine, rear engine cars were the way to go. Richard just knuckled down. And for him, the success of the uh, 156 is largely down to him, more than Phil and uh, Von Trips. He was the one that uh, developed it and they kind of took the credit, not not in a nasty way, but, uh, you know, you know uh, he, Phil, Phil Hill was obviously a team leader. And it's, it's just the colour of it, the, you know, it's, 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 people are always say the Scarlet Ferrari is, it's, it's not, Ferrari isn't red, it's a special, uh, special colour. And just everything about it is, is a beautiful car. And you, I, even though I'm a people person, you can't fail to be amazed by, by that particular car. Right. Now, this is an amazing, I don't know if I'd call it a coincidence, but I'm sitting here in Gig Harbor, Washington, talking with Richard Jenkins over in Great Britain about Richie Ginther. And I'm looking at the wall in front in my room, my studio here, and there's a painting. And it's a painting of that F1 car, the number two car that Richie drove. I kid you not. I'm looking at it right now as I'm talking to you about him. Pretty small world, pretty incredible. Yeah, and the car behind him is the one that Phil Hill drove. Um, but the number two car is the one that's in the forefront of that painting. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a picture of that and send it to you. Cause as you're describing yeah, no, this, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, wait a minute. He did drive that number two. So that's very, very cool. Well, here's a bit of a introspective question for you. And since you're not a diehard car guy, but you've evolved into a car guy, we'll, we'll put you there. If you woke yeah. up tomorrow, Richard, and you were manifest as a car, you actually were a car parked in the, the garage or the shed, what would Richard Jenkins be and why? I probably wouldn't be uh, very interesting. Um, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm being uh, quite humble, but I would be a Ford Fusion. Uh, that's the car I actually drive at the moment. I'm afraid uh, I haven't got anything more exciting. But the reason for that is I'm nothing amazing to look at, and it's nothing amazing to look at, but it's hard working, gets the job done, it's exceptionally reliable. I've never had any real problems with it. It's uh, not ostentatious at all. No problems, of course. It gets you to where you want to go as effectively as it can, and uh, I think that's me. Nicely said. I, I like it. Good answer. You passed that test. We're entering the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some quick throttle blips uh, of that Ford Fusion. Let's put it that way. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has helped contribute to your successes in life and especially the success of writing this book? It's got to be a hard work ethic. My family have always had a hard work ethic and I'm, I'm the same. Never give up and never be afraid of any challenges. Now, I think I know the answer to this one. If I could wave a magic wand and arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anyone in the mm. automotive or racing industry, would it be, Richie? It would, but I'm going to say two people. Okay. Uh, if it's right. Obviously, Dad, 
would be Richie, uh, mainly to see what he would think of the book. I mean, his, his widow has kind of said, you know, he'd be embarrassed, but he'd be pleased. But I'm going to say, if those still with us, I've got to mention Brian Redman. Been fortunate to meet him once or twice. He's, he's fantastic to listen to. Uh, absolute delight. So uh, if I could have Richie and Brian at the same uh, same table, that'd be brilliant. I think that'd be pretty fun. Now, Brian's been a mm-hmm. guest here on the show, and yeah. um, he was actually supposed to be here for a special Porsche Club event. Uh, we're going to have a Porsche, I believe it was 917 they're going to have here uh at a Porsche Club event, of course, it's been canceled like all the events, so we're going to do it later in the year when things settle down here. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. I've met him a few times, but getting to interview him was fantastic. Um, he's quite a character, yeah. And uh, uh, I remember asking him a question. I, I did a brief interview with him a few years ago uh, for, the, for the website, and I had about five minutes of questions prepared. One question... Uh, Brian talked for, I think it was 35 minutes, and that was just one question. I just oh, didn't yeah. stop him. I just let him carry on. It, it was yep. absolute, absolute treat. Absolutely. It's the way to go. By the way, I interviewed him on his birthday, and he sang me the British birthday song, which you probably know. I didn't know it. It's quite a funny song. Uh, but, uh, yeah, listeners can go back and find that show. I interviewed him on his birthday, and it was hilarious. So uh, you guys have a very unique sense of hu- humor over there, that's for sure. How about the best automotive advice someone else has ever given you? Uh, I think, to be honest, if you... Well, I'm, I'm going to use it in context with the book, don't mind. And it was basically, if you're telling a story, have the facts and the stats to go with it. Um, because then you keep everybody happy. Uh, no point no point being salacious just for um, titillation, if you like, with a book. Just, just, just keep it simple. Uh, and keep it honest. Yeah. And I'll tell you, car people, they will correct you. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they yeah. know their facts. How about a great resource that you found out there that's a go-to for you? Is there one you'd like to share? Well, I'm going to be biased, if you don't mind. Uh, I'm going to go for uh, oldracingcars.com. Uh, Not just because of my work with the drivers, but also my colleague Alan's work with the cars. And, you know, there's thousands of old racing cars and what's happened to them so i, th- I think there's enough if you're a car person definitely interested if you're a people person uh there's interest there for you so absolutely it's everybody happy yep old racing com. really fun place to go check out and spend some time now i always ask my guests if there's a book they'd like to recommend obviously today we're going to recommend this book that richard jenkins has written richie ginther Motor Racing's Free Thinker. Is there another book that you might recommend that you've enjoyed reading? I'm going to have to say Inside Track by, uh, well, basically by a number of people, Doug Nye, uh, Derek Hill, but basically the Phil Hill uh, book. Now, it is ridiculously expensive, but it is worth it. I mean, I, I, it's my hope that if I do well enough in this, I can convince my wife that Inside Track is a good purchase. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's what I'm aiming for. We've had some photos from the Hill family collection in this book, and they, they again, are wonderful. If free photos is uh, visually amazing, just imagine what free volumes of uh, Phil's photos would be. So it's, it's got to be inside track. Yeah, um, I had Phil's son on the show here, and I, I got those three volumes, those books. They're just wonderful, just fantastic. And I had to. Distinct honor of having lunch with Phil once. Uh, he was a guest of honor at our local vintage racing weekend. And my son, I think, was about seven at the time. And he sat across from us at the lunch table and we got to chat with him. He was really nice to my son. Uh, we got some nice pictures of him with my race car, which is a, uh, was a 1960 Lotus Formula Junior. Um, so uh, what a marvelous guy. And, of course, his son Derek's a really great guy as well. Become Absolutely. a friend of his. Yeah, very cool. All right, well, we are up to the checkered flag here. Today's kind of a fun day for you, Richard, because I'm going to buy you a very cool vintage collector car, race car, whatever you'd like to have. I'm going to park it in your garage. But there's a couple rules to this game just to make it interesting. You can't sell it to buy a bunch of other toys with or fund your kid's college education or write another book. You have to keep it, and I want you to drive it and enjoy it. So don't pick a garage queen, as we call them. Uh, but it's the only one very cool collector car you can have 
in your garage. So what can I buy you today? Well, I'm probably going to surprise you. Um, some people might go, hmm, that's unusual. But I'm a very practical person. I don't want a particularly beautiful looking car if it's going to break down all the time. So for that reason, and because I've appreciated a lot about this company whilst writing about Richie, I'm going to actually choose a Honda. They they always produce uh, quality, reliable cars. Uh, hopefully, Honda will send me the check uh, for this in in a minute. <laughs> Um, but I'm actually, I'm actually going to choose the Honda S2000. Uh, nice looking car, uh, very nice looking car, uh, very reliable, and I think I'd have a lot of fun with that. Well, I think so. Uh, very cool cars, and uh, thanks for not breaking my uh, checkbook here. I appreciate that. Excellent. Uh, that's all right. It gives you gives you more money for other things. But there you go. Yeah, exactly. I appreciate that. But very very cool cars, and actually they've kind of come back now with the resurgence of collector cars, uh, Japanese collector cars, and people wanting those vehicles. So uh, I think that'll be an easy get for you. Do you have a color preference just so I deliver the right color car? Oh, it will have to be Scarlet. Scarlet. Uh, As as in the Ferrari, but uh, I'm going to change it to the Honda. We'll do it in Rosso Red, since it's got to be the Italian Red. Yeah, instead of the Honda Red, which Honda made a couple great Reds. Uh, My... uh, past uh, late father-in-law had a Honda Prelude when those came out with the four-wheel steering. If you remember those cars, uh, yeah, quite interesting. Yeah, and and yeah. his was a, was a really nice red, almost a Ferrari red. It wasn't super bright. It had a little bit of a touch of blue to it that gave it a deep color. I detailed that car for him a few times. So uh, it was always fun to park that thing with that four-wheel that's steering. <laughs> it's bizarre. <laughs> yeah, like, well, that's pretty easy. So very cool. Well, listen, Richard, you've taken us on a great ride today. This has been really fun to learn more about this new book you've written. I want to thank you for sharing some time with us today and for well, writing the book as well. Yeah. Could you offer us one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you drive off into the English countryside in that Honda S2000? Yeah, I'm going to quote another great American. I'm going to quote James Stewart because he, if you've ever seen the film Harvey, uh, he said, in this world, you must be oh so smart, or oh so, but I can't do the accent, uh, but oh so smart, or oh so pleasant. Well, for years I was smart, I recommend pleasant, you may quote me. And I, I think, I've, I've tried to live my life like that. Nice, very nice. How can people follow along with you and what you're doing? If you want to go to the, well, there's two ways. If you want to go for the book, the book is online. You, you can buy it online, uh, uk. At the moment, obviously, just just to confirm, we are still open. The publisher still sending stuff out. Um, obviously, uh, the shutdown hasn't stopped that. If you are shut down, what could be better than reading a good book while you're at home? The other resource is obviously, as I mentioned, the uh, www. com website. But Absolutely. I'm still involved. With. There you go. I'll make sure I put links to both of those. On a Richard Jenkins show notes page, just go to carsyad.com, type in Richard Jenkins, J-E-N-K-I-N-S, and that page will pop up. I would encourage you to, to add this wonderful book to your library, your automotive library. I think you're going to find it fascinating, uh, really brilliant that you brought forward in our lives uh, somebody who all of us who love vintage racing and old racing stories uh, – know about, but we didn't really know about the man. Let me ask you one last question. And I wanted to ask you this earlier, and it it skipped my mind. The title, Richie Ginther, Motor Racing's Free Thinker. Free Thinker. Why those words? Well, he was a free spirit, and he was a thinking man. Somebody suggested it to me. I kind of thought about it because I was trying to be clever, as you, you normally are with these types of things. And I thought, no, 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 because if I go for a clever pun, it sounds all right once, but then, you know, I've got to, I've got to market this and people get bored with the pun. So I wanted to just do a little intriguing um, title that makes you think, hmm, that's, that's unusual. Uh, what's that all about? But yeah, he was a free spirit. And um, when I say free spirit, I'm not talking about uh, hippie type person you know he he had his own mind and as a thinker he was a thinker all his life he was interested in in cars and objects but he wasn't just interested in them he was interested in why they work um and 
he picked this up from his dad. Uh, his dad worked for a tool and die, uh, in his, uh, worked as a tool and die maker at an aircraft factory in uh, Santa Monica. And he wanted to know what is it that his dad's doing to put that together on the airplane? Why does that part make the airplane work? And this, this was a small boy, uh, about seven, eight years old. And he carried that all the way through, even, you know, when he quit racing, he wanted to know when he was making art out of uh, precious stones he found in the desert, he still wanted to know, right, if I put this together and this together, what happened? Uh, how can I tweak that? And so he was a very, he was a very thinking man. And as somebody once said to me, he was a thinker, not a drinker, or it certainly was a, uh, when he was a baby. <laughs> so I kind of put them together and I, I think, I think it sums him up. Yeah, I think it does as well. I know he followed a bit in his father's footsteps for a short time and worked at Douglas Aircraft. Uh, yeah. When you think about that part of Southern California, there were so many uh, aircraft manufacturing uh, companies going on there at the time. There's still a few left, but that whole area, especially over in the valley, was just full of of automotive uh, aircraft manufacturers and, of course, left over from World War II. Uh, those companies all went on to to be big. Well, fascinating. I think it's a great title that you chose. Again, listeners, you can find everything and get copies of this book. I encourage you to add it to your library here on the Cars yeah website. We'll put links there for you. Richard, thanks for being so generous today with your time and your expertise. You're welcome. It's been fun. Uh, until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Take care. Thank you. Hey, Cars Yeah listeners, this is Mark Green. If you love the Cars Yeah podcast, I have something new for you. I've teamed up with Keith Martin, a collector car market expert and the editor of Sports Car Market Magazine to create the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast. Buy, Sell, Hold is the essence of collecting. Together, we take you on an educational ride into the collector car market, talking with industry experts, helping you navigate your collector car journey so you know when to buy, sell, hold. We talk with seasoned experts, who buy, sell, and hold investment vehicles, and they'll share their insider secrets on how they make their buying decisions when it comes to making these important investments. You'll find the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast on the Cars Yow website, on the Sports Car Market website, and if you're a podcast app subscriber to Cars Yow, Buy, Sell, Hold will come right to your mobile device, just like the Cars Yow podcast, automatically. Join Keith Martin and me on a great new venture on the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.